What's up, everybody? Welcome to Joe Biden's America, where everything's made up and the facts don't matter. The facts are just like a civics class in California stand. <laughs> I'm Toxic Male. That is Terrence Pop. Ah, what's up, you pumpernickel pumpers? Get it? <laughs> pumpernickel? Pumper right in the nickel. Ha <laughs> ha! Get and your if, five cents in. Or if it's a silver dollar, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a special guest on with us tonight. Um, he makes my Sean Connery impression look like absolute shite. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to watch uh, his reel here from you, Boob, and make sure that I'm putting into theater mode so y'all can see it properly. Uh -huh. Jerry Conway as Sean Connery in the, the cunt for Red October. I like it. Hope we don't get uh, copyright for this. He's too Comrades, good. It is an honor to speak to you today. And it is an honor to be sailing with you on our motherland's most recent achievement. Once again, we play our dangerous game. A game of chess against our old adversary, the American Navy. For 40 years, your fathers before you and your older brothers played this game and played it well. Yes. But today, the game is different. One time, the world shuddered at the sound of our rockets. But today, they will tremble at the sound of our silence. The order is, engage the silent drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like it. Outstanding. We got Jerry Conway on the line. How you doing, good sir? Hallelujah. Praise God. Great. It's great to have me. Uh, great to have me. Great for you guys to have me. I really appreciate it. Sorry. Listen, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. It's Why? Hey, it's all good, man. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Shalom to everybody. Uh, anytime, life. brother. And, uh, You've been sending listen, us news listen, tips for years. Yeah, bro. So. Listen to Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, where did you find our show? Pop, I, listen, Pop, I know you've been on YouTube for years I've been following you since 2017. Uh, I was in a I was in a relationship with this woman. She was gorgeous, mm. but uh, she was a complete narcissist. And I didn't even know what a narcissist was. I thought a narcissist was a woman that would just, or or, or a person, a man or a woman that would just like looking at themselves in the mirror. Mm. <laughs> I had no idea the depth of of narcissism and what the evil that it entails. Mm. So I did a lot of research on narcissism, and I was like, "Wait a second!" And then I found you, and I'm like, "All the wisdom that you shared, man, it was phenomenal, phenomenal." I can't say you saved my life because I wasn't suicidal at the time, but uh, I really, I love your work. I love your work. You're genius, and your production, Blake, you're you're phenomenal. You well, guys are just great. See, I just come up Thank with crazy Jerry. ideas, <laughs> and uh, his expertise knocks it out of the park. <laughs> Oh, you definitely got the crazy ideas. Oh my god! And every once in a while, they just they, they borderline on sheer genius and lunacy. Well, well, for instance, I was giving a briefing about one of my videos at the reserve center. I had like seventy soldiers in the room. Okay. And like literally, as I go, I'm going down point for point, and this uh, what was this? Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Either the horse chick or fun with numbers. And then there's another one I did on divorce. But yeah, literally, the horse chick just breaks a lot of hearts, man. Cause... Yeah, it was like an hour long. <laughs> it was mainly just three briefings. It was for entertainment purposes only. And like I could hear guys in the gr background going, dude, was Sergeant Pop in the room when that happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt. Because quite literally, these women, it's like the same fucking playbook over and over and over again. Yep. It's factory default settings. If yeah. they all come out of the factory with the same factory default settings, and it doesn't matter where you, where in the world, they're all programmed the same way. Mm -hmm. And we would all love to think that our circumstances were unique. And then Pop starts writing on the board, <laughs> and your illusions get shattered like sugar glass. Yeah, but <laughs> we've well, had. I, I want to be clear. This obviously is not all women, but I'm talking about the narcissistic women. They're all programmed the same way. Yeah. That's what that, that's who I'm referring to. Yeah, it's and now with stuff like you know, with social media only fans, that is going to become a more and more prevalent problem unless people nip it in the bud. Uh, yeah, it's going to get really bad moving forward, man. It's going to get real bad. Oh, my God. And, and I did a video called The Spinster Bubble. And, you know, I think we, 
<laughs> I love that one. We need to do a show where we uh, splice together all my predictions and then show how they, they came true in the real world as, as time went on. Oh, like Nostra Dumbass? Or? Yeah, Nostra Dumbass. <laughs> Nostra Papas, I don't know, something. Yeah, like, uh, you know, I Nostra covered... Gruntus, there you go. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? I, I mean, I've, I don't know. It's, it's, the thing is, is what's happening here happened already in China, the Soviet Union. It's the same pattern. Yeah. You can learn a lot about the future if you study history. Why yeah. do you think uh, a particular political affiliation wants to, you know, burn books and tear down statues? Just saying. Yeah, that's right. They they want they want to keep doing the stupid shit and repeat the fucking cycle of dumbassery. <laughs> True story. Speaking of dumbassery, and everybody's talking about this, so we have to just get it out of the way. Did someone just leak SCOTUS's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in order to pressure the court? Probably. Okay. Well, one, I think that's probably what happened. Number two, um, you're going to see a massive backlash from the left in the next like two to four weeks about this. I think that was the idea. Yes. And, and the only reason there's going to be a backlash, and, and this is what cracks me up, is because not a fucking one of them knows how the government works. Pretty much. Because this is literally just a Supreme Court decision and nothing more. This is not legislation. It does not magically nullify the legality of abortion. All it does is it takes that ball and it punts it back to Congress. And at that point, they have two choices. One, they can choose to <clears throat> legislate laws that would federally legalize abortion. Mm -hmm. <gasps> but okay. they would not be able to in any way satisfactorily appease the leftoids in a way that would pass the Senate. Yeah. Well, because leftoids would be like, well, I want it up until birth and 28 days following. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> and then, of course, choice number two is Congress just does what they should do, which is leave it alone. Push it to the states. And push it to the states. You but, handle your shit. But this is what happens when you push it to the states. All right, you're going to wind up with red states that outlaw it or severely restrict it, and you're going to have the blue crazy states that allow it. And that's yet another crack yeah. in, the, in the division between, you know, the yeah. factions in this country. Yeah, the Casey Anthony Act, you know, allowing abortion up to 28 days in California. Or if yeah. some interpretations of the law hold true and were to develop a president in, in court, one year. Wow. Yeah, I, I would love to be able to just, you know... Rip somebody limb from limb because they pissed me off and call it health care. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen? Uh, I sat down years ago and I watched uh, a video on late late term um, abortions. Ugh. And quite literally, they inject the baby with some kind of toxin and then they saw it to pieces in the womb. It is absolutely savage. Yep, and, and, and doctors. Crush the skull. Yeah, and crush doctors that do that need to get fucking just put down. And what do they do with the parts? Jerry knows about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, they go to the highest bidder. <laughs> yes, of course, but but we would never do that. No, no, that's that's that's, well, a, that's a right wing conspiracy that, theory. They, that actually that story actually broke in the year two thousand. Yeah, and I don't know if you recall, but back in two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two. Uh, George W. was making a huge, huge, huge stink about uh, doing, um, what is it, the uh, stem cell research. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Where I do remember you think that. those stem cells were coming from? Yep. Yep. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Now, yeah. And when you call out this illegality, apparently you get charged with nine felonies yeah. for so, exposing this practice. Yeah, they, well, they, they exposed the fact that they were selling the parts and the guy got hit with a bunch of felonies. Yeah. It's bullshit. It really is. Just welcome to <laughs> Soviet America, I guess we should say, where you expose the crime and you do the time. But but people don't understand. It's called mission creep. Yep. It started off with um, rare and rare and safe. Yeah, safe, legal, and rare. Yeah. And it slowly marched up all the way to the point where up to birth, and then it went up to possibly a month after birth. And they want to do a year. 
Okay, now what's, whole year. Yeah, now, what's if, what's if to say if that's not sacrificing the innocence to Moek? I don't know what is. I know <laughs> shit. Yeah, I know it's insane. And then you know who's to say then that you know if your if your IQ is a certain level, we just take you out back and put you down. Or if you get too old, we yeah. take you out back and put you down. You get too sick, we put you down. Like when does it fucking stop? And when do we start calling it fucking genocide? I I just want to clarify this. I mean. Allegedly, six million dead was genocide yeah. in World War II. We're up well over a billion worldwide. So I would say we jumped that hurdle a long time ago. Yeah. But you're not allowed to call it that because, you know, it's stunning and brave. And believe all women. <laughs> now, listen. Well, it was like... the, Sorry, go ahead. I have no problem with, like, the morning after pill. All right, women already have a, like, it's like two dozen forms of birth control and the morning after pill. Of course. Okay. And then they, they carry a child, and then they want to get rid of it at six or seven months. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, fuck you. They already have the AAA insurance policy they can abandon, adopt, and abort. Yep. Men have pay or run. Pretty much. That's yeah. it. And now they want to kill. So it's if if a if a man is in a relationship, this happened to me with my my ex wife. Actually, before we were even engaged, we were just uh, dating. But my ex wife uh, was uh, found out that she was pregnant, and uh, she came to me in tears. And I said, "What's wrong?" And she said, uh, "I'm pregnant." And I said, "That's wonderful." And she said, "No, I don't want it." And I had zero say in the matter. Zero. Lovely. Absolutely none. Didn't matter. Didn't yep. matter what I said. Didn't matter how I, how I felt, what I believed. Made no difference. Yep. And you know what? Mm. In my, if you're with a woman that pulls that, you need to cut her away. Yep. Yeah. Can you do me a favor and can you time travel back 25 years and tell me that, please? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I can. I'm a time traveling hobgoblin. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've yeah, had go back, go back to uh, go back to August of nineteen ninety seven. Oof, Oof. Uh, and, and it's it's funny, you know, you, you mentioned that, and, and I have a video to go with it. And the funny thing is, that this person thinks that they're they're coming up with a new strategy. All right, it's hilarious. Me out, hear me out. If they overturn, if they overturn Roe, v. Wade, Roe v. Wade, I don't know what happened here. Humans that possess, humans that possess uteruses, uteruses should collectively, should collectively get together. Get together. And never have and sex never with have men sex again. With men again. Some of you guys, some of you guys, are already, already, already about it. <laughs> and give up their power over men? You honestly think that's going to happen? They're already losing their power hand over fist. Exactly. And they did it to themselves. That's right, because we're starting to, to treat them like men. I'm sorry, there might have been an echo on that one. I hope everybody was able to understand it. Okay. Um, it, I had this all programmed earlier. Everything got screwed up. So. Murphy yeah. showed Murphy. up. Murphy. Like, just for the record, Blake, it doesn't really matter, but I can't hear the, the videos that you're playing. I can't hear the audio on them. Okay. okay. Sorry It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm good. Son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, uh, don't worry I, about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's no, fine. No, don't it's, worry about it's it. cool. It's cool. I'm just like, I am, I just don't understand this. Like, the left just wants to murder people, take away your rights, lock you in your fucking house. Mm -hmm. They want you to own nothing and be happy. And then continue to be, you know, happy, productive people. It's not going to fucking happen. Everything they want to do goes directly against human nature. Yeah, and then they claim that we're the ones infringing on their reproductive freedoms, despite the fact men don't have any. That's right. You either pay or go to jail. Look, if you, listen, they can close their legs or stand up and and handle everything orally, and they'll be fine. Yeah. Or they can take it in the in the nickel. You know, we get their their <laughs> pumper nickel pumped. Pumper in the nickel. I've, I don't think any, any woman's got pregnant from getting pumped in the ass. I'm just saying. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't do that kind of thing. I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm just, I, it's an option out there. It is. It's, it's an option. Hmm. The open option position. That's why you call it that. That's exactly right. Are, are we? Uh, if I can raise a practical point, of course. Uh, is this okay to be discussing these topics on this platform? I think we're okay. <laughs> yeah, we're doing okay. I mean, there's some things that, uh, right. you know, we can talk lightly around. Uh, I mean, at this point in time, this is probably the hot topic. So if they're yeah. going to come after us for having an opinion, eh, fuck them. Well, yeah. What are you going to do? It's not like we're on borrowed time on this platform already or anything. 
<laughs> yeah, and one of the oh, main yeah. reasons we didn't get cut is uh, I pulled out the camouflage. Yes. And I started doing the army stories and then doing covering news and stuff. Dudes love the army stories, yeah, man. Yeah, because we would have got whacked as an M- 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 MGTOW channel like in 15, 16. <laughs> Oh, man, we got one rumble rant over here from Braco69. Says, I want, I so want to see you guys noodle with Hannah Barron. Hannah Barron. Have you heard of Hannah I have no idea who that is. Uh, Neither do I. I will have to look her up. You going to ask me to remember names? No. No, no, no. I can't do it. Took him three years to remember my name. You think he's going to remember some random creator online? (laughs) Unless you watch him constantly. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, this is just... This is red meat for the base. You know, somebody leaked this. And by the way, this is a horrifying security problem. However, this happened. This is the first time it's ever happened. Yes. And I believe they have uh, narrowed down the leaker. Mm, really? Yeah. They need to They need to put their boot on that dude's neck hard. Good times. You know, it's not like we're going to see another summer of love or anything. Oh, Like, yeah. that wasn't the entire idea to try to put pressure on these guys before the actual decision to get them to reverse their opinions, you know, threaten their lives, threaten their families. Yeah, not like we've know, seen that before or anything. Oh, no, no. And I'm, I'm sure, have they stormed the Supreme Court yet? And if uh, they do, are they going to get hit with insurrection as well? Uh, well, they should have gotten hit with insurrection when they did it for Kavanaugh. But, yeah, I know. Uh, you know, they're leftoids, so the law doesn't apply to them. Yeah, and that needs to change. Yes, it does. Because this double standard thing is, is not is not going to help people at all. Yep. Uh, but I wish it ended there. Well, here we go with the Harry Potter. <laughs> the Harry Potter? Yeah, the Harry Potter segment. Oh, the Ministry of Truth? Yes. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? Uh, they really, it does look like they hired Dolores Umbridge to... Uh, to start right. spying on people. I mean, you find an avowed person against the First Amendment, and then you put her in charge of disinformation. The same party of people that brought you Antifa's an idea, man, and Summer of Love, and a BLM actually cares about black people and fiery but peaceful protests. Those are the people deciding now what's misinformation. That's fucking insane. What could go wrong? I know. I know. <laughs> and listen, you know, I never expected... To retire from the army, and then right into another battlefield. Yeah, this, this is another war. Yeah, Jerry, I hope your hard drives are clean, man. They're going to be coming after you now. <laughs> Probably. Uh, I don't. I don't have anything on my hard drive anymore. I just have work work related stuff, and uh, that's that's important. I got some news stories here and there, and some sound files, a couple of movies, but nothing nothing incriminating yeah well you're I'm guilty by association it. now <laughs> yep. i was thinking about that i was thinking about that and if somebody if somebody's going to be that petty uh and i'm not allowed to speak to who i want to speak to or associate or watch or listen to what i want want to and you're going to censor that then um you're uh you're far worse than you could ever accuse anyone else of being hey you know what I like it. Thug life. I could not have said that better. That oh, is yeah. fantastic, sir. I don't uh, know. Like, uh, my thing is this: is we have a First <laughs> Amendment and a Second Amendment, the, and there was a reason they made the First Amendment what it was because free speech yeah. is a cornerstone for the very country we live in. Yes. Okay, and, and there you have oh, to be able I to have... protect that. Yeah. I have I have a I have a question for you guys. Now don't do not look this up. Do not Google this. I want to ask you if either one of you know. And if you know, just say yes or no. Don't answer the question. Do I have to answer in the form who of was a the question? First per- <laughs> who was the first person who was the first person to coin the term politically correct? Oh heck I do you know. not I have oh. no idea. Oh no, i I'm in the dark on that one. Who was that? It was Mao Se Tung. Oh shit. Leader of the Leader of the Chinese Communist Party from 1949 until his death in 1976. He coined the term politically correct. Wow. That's another one we're going to put in our quiver to use against the left. Yeah, not like we're, uh, you know, falling victim to that train of thought. Yep. <laughs> Every I mean, day. We're like, literally experiencing the red wave that China had in the 70s and 80s. To, yeah. It's happening here. That's amazing. Wow. 
And uh, the funny thing, I mean, we have sacrificed everything to that God of PC. Mm-hmm. And, and, it's, and it's only now that we're finally starting to see the tide moving in the other direction because all these companies that embraced this and cuddled it like a teddy bear, they're all losing money. Disney I, is I so want, balls deep in debt. I can't wait until they implode. I, I want to listen. If I wind up running the show, I'm going to run all of those fucking companies into the ground. I will. I will fucking destroy them. I'll break them up, and you know, make. Now I'm going to break them up and have so the opportunity out there is for smaller businesses to come in and fill the gap. Yeah, capitalism. But, who knew? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because right now. We have corporations that are huge, and we're falling into crony capitalism. Yep. And and literally, the end result of that is the same at, in socialism and communism. You you get the small little group at top who think they know best for everyone, mm-hmm. and, and it's fucking insane. And they're completely out of touch with the average person. Uh, yeah, like oh, like Mr. Bill Gates. Yeah. J- just take all all those companies, put them in a giant Pringles can. <laughs> Done. Yeah, and uh, set him on fire, man. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you have Elon Musk who purchased Twitter, and now they have they want him to um, uh, appear before Congress to explain why he. D- All he has to say is, "I had the money, I bought them. This is a capitalist <laughs> country. Fuck off." If you have a problem with that, you could talk to the army of fucking lawyers at my six. Yeah, well, one thing I've noticed about the establishment is that if they create a public figure like the establishment created Donald Trump they the expect part, yeah. some they expect their creations to fall in line and toe said line when they don't even if it's just for show they <laughs> crucify these people upside down yeah so they basically crucify these people who show character Character is people who do the right thing even when nobody's fucking watching. And they're punishing those people. Do you know how rare those people are? Yeah. I mean, I, I in my sir in my military service, I recall a couple of soldiers who did the right thing and they were gonna get fucking crucified for it from our upper chain of command. And I literally had to step up to the plate and go to bat for them and run top cover so they wouldn't get fucked up. Because I realize how fucking rare that is. Yeah. If you have somebody that does the right thing, even when no one is watching, that's a valuable asset. And for you to crush his nuts, that's some bad fucking karma right there. Uh. Well, it's prophecy coming true. They're going to call good evil and evil good. Mm-hmm. And uh, the good's being persecuted and the, the bad are being elevated and, yep. and, and glorified. It's it's disgraceful. It's beyond disgraceful. Yeah, degeneracy is the new morality, according to modern leftoids. Mm-hmm. It's quite that, that is messed up. And another thing I would do with, uh, if I wound up running the show, is uh, I would severely crack down on a lot of these weird ass religions and shit that's popping up, because uh, some of that stuff, Scientology. <laughs> well, you know, first of all, who am I to actually determine what what system is right or wrong? But I have a problem with like the sadists because I mean, I- I'm sorry because I- you can probably trace them to the grooming that's taken place at Disney. No. There's, I mean, there's been this underpinning um, rumor around Hollywood, you know, that they're worshiping the devil, they're drinking blood, they're sacrificing kids, oh, they're shit, pedophiles. D- didn't Megan Fox just come out the other day and admit that her and her new husband, boyfriend, fiance, whatever the hell it is, like they, they literally drink each other's blood? Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, and, oh, God, yeah. And like, my thing is this. Just look at their track record for child stars. Well, the know. reason I brought up the religion thing is because if we cut out religion, how are we going to teach morality to people? They're not going to fucking get it. You're going to have a bunch of narcissistic, amoral individuals running around. That's not good for our civilization nor the world. Yeah, because I, I remember like, the, the, the pinnacle of the atheist argument has always been, well, you don't need religion to teach morality. Well, when you, t- when, you, know, you, you go up in arms and you screech and you cry about don't say gay, but 
you tell everybody to fuck off when they point out it's been don't say Jesus for like 30 years. Yeah. And you see exactly which way we're going. I'm just saying you you might have a very valid point. I'm just saying that. I mean, yeah. I mean, and listen, I'm not an uber religious person. I'm, I'm not. I, I lost my, a lot of my uh, um, my oomph for organized religion when I realized just how much they extort you. Yeah. I fucking hate that. <laughs> Speaking of extortion, we need to get back to the topic at hand here, right. but because this is just too funny. And uh, remember, we always say usually the difference between a conspiracy theory and empirical fact is roughly four to six months, right? Oh, it used to be one to five years. How about 48 hours? <laughs> the Babylon Bee put out an article. That said, Government Disinformation Board determines all criticism of Government Disinformation Board to be disinformation, okay? 48 hours later, Majorca says, Majorca cites misinformation about Homeland Security's Disinformation Board. <laughs> <laughs> Two days! God damn. Oh, shit. And Majorca is an established liar. And his line this time... And correct me if I'm wrong on this one, Jerry. I'm sure you're probably much more up to date on this than I am. Well, we're not going to censor Americans. We're not looking at American disinformation. We're looking mostly at China and Russia assets. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. Well, this thing came out right after when uh, Elon Musk uh, uh, acquired Twitter. Yeah, so they, you think there's a little bit of a coincidence there? Just a bit. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, of course this is why they're doing that. Um, it's exactly why they're because, doing that. It's no coincidence at all. That's well, what I'm saying. Yeah, and they're they trying know, to scrub their servers like a motherfucker, well, and it's not working. Well, well, number one, the left <laughs> and the people in charge now know that big tech got Biden installed. Yeah. Well, I mean, even you look, take away that, that is the last major weapon in the culture war. Yeah, I mean, t take a look at this right here. I mean, the headline of that first article, we're talking about the DHS disinformation union headed by a woman who said a Hunter Biden laptop story was disinformation. Gee, I can't imagine if there's any sort of conflict of interest in this position. No bias at all whatsoever. Yeah, none, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. I don't know what you're, what you're talking about. <laughs> I could learn a lot about doing a Sean Connery impression just from listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, I know you do Connery, Elliot. Uh, do, do you have any others, or are you just you know like epic voice guy, British guy? Well, I do many different British voices, different dialects. Oh, you do, and, do you? Uh, so yeah, there's a few. There's a few. I don't do uh, what, what's that one, the mouse that you do? The mouse. The uh, mouse. Uh, 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 Crocky, uh, Pinky, Pinky in the brain. No. Pinky in the brain. That's it. Yeah, you can't I, do I, I can't that really one. do that one. Well, I can't the really shit? do that one. I can say, uh, <laughs> Look, 11, 11, 11, 11. These all go to 11. Well, well, why don't you just make 10 be louder and make 10 be the top and make that lot a little louder? Well, because this one goes, goes to, to 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching that. That was, a, that was a funny movie. Yeah, man. And that's a, a, a damn shame. You want to talk about somebody who went from the top of the heap to, I mean, woke dog shit, Rob Reiner, the guy who made... Princess Bride, Spinal Tap, mm. uh, When Harry Met Sally, uh, The American President, tons of great movies over a great career. And now he's like, mm, Orange Man Bad. Meh. You know, the older I get, the more I realized Archie Bunker was a thousand percent correct. And he really was a fucking meathead. He was. He was. <laughs> listen, listen. Most <laughs> actors, most actors in television and Hollywood that you see over the years in the most memorable roles that they play, they're not acting. Like if you go back and you look at the old Odd Couple with uh, Jack Klugman and Tony Randall, Tony Randall wasn't acting. That's how he was. That's exactly how he was. And if you look at uh, Mark Wahlberg, by the way, his brother Donnie, uh, Donnie Wahlberg, I grew up in Dorchester, 02122, mm -hmm. and uh, Donnie Wahlberg and I dated the same girl. Not at the same time. But well, we dated the same girl. Did you, bang, hope not. Before, did, did you bang her? Before before he was in New Kids on the Block, and then she dumped him. Uh -huh. And then uh, are she you kicked herself a year later when. Uh, when are that you band Eskimo came Brothers up. with Donnie Wahlberg? Yeah. 
Uh, I don't think so. No, oh. no, not Eskimo well, Brothers. I mean, yeah, it's better to be Eskimo Brothers, though, than it is to banger at the same time, because then you're at least 75% gay. Uh, you get your uh, filthy fifth. You touch tips ninth. in the middle. I mean, it's, it's not good. Sickening but I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned Mark Wahlberg. Now, if you look at any of Mark Wahlberg's films, <clears throat> somebody will say, oh, he was awesome in fear. I said because he was playing himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't start really good and good at acting until like the early two thousands, and then, then when he was in The Departed, he just knocked it out of the fucking park. That was actually good, and that was when I was like, okay, he can act. I think. I think he's finally actually figured it out, and he's not just playing himself every time. Yeah. See, I'm too old for that. I would. I couldn't change. I'm just me. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You have a a niche. I'm, I am the, the I am the uh, the epitome of the grunt. <laughs> Just a to, bit. to go back to the uh, the Rob Reiner thing when, when he was in All in the Family, he he wasn't he was playing himself. That was that was his his mentality. It's been his mentality all along. Mm -hmm. It's not like he suddenly changed. No, he's he but he was just he was capable of making great art, and it 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 always sucks when you you grow up with the art. And then you realize that the character he played, that you, it like, as, the, as you get older, you just, you look back on that, and you're like, well, he really was every bit the idiot that Archie said he was, but we were supposed to be laughing at Archie. Yeah. And, exactly. and now you see exactly. him and you're like, wow, you're just, you're gone. You're, you're, you're yeah. done. Meathead. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, there was, there was a period of history, a long period of history where like late night talk show hosts, Johnny Carson, you know, Letterman, and they wouldn't talk politics or they wouldn't zero in specifically on one party they would make jokes across the board how come no one on late night kimmel or, or any of the other guys how come nobody's making jokes about biden and and like him losing his way and sh going to shake hands with no one and you know not being able to find his way off the stage that's because or all that, of our media sort of thing. They, they just they don't he's got carte blanche they don't they don't even touch it no don't touch don't don't mention oh, no, it. Yeah, yeah. it's because all of our media is owned by six corporations and all yeah, of those corporations donate to the democratic party mm -hmm. and i'm and, sure I'm and sure. How, how many news organizations besides abc does disney own i have no idea shit i don't know i have no but idea abc abc is a big one yes mm -hmm. yeah that is that is huge <clears throat> And then they're just they're buying up everything else, and I'm just wondering with what money. If you're 55 billion in debt, where are you where are you squirreling the assets from to get all these? Are you talking dollars? about Disney? Yeah. Oh my God, I know. Well, first of all, they've Oof. they have lost almost half their stock value in the past seven months, and it doesn't look like it's going to recover anytime soon. It's because they've been sucking a lot of these. Hey man, <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. Uh, They've been making this woke content that nobody wants to fucking watch. Yeah. Now, listen, I mean, Hollywood used to have an equation when they would, you know, try to get the money put up for, to make these movies. And as long as you followed the equation, everyone was happy. Now, usually, it would, at a minimum, it would break even. If they're lucky, it would be a blockbuster. But right now... They've tampered with that equa that money-making equation that Hollywood used to use. It's gone now. And they've literally made flop after flop after fucking flop. Disney bought Star Wars. They had 40 years of fans. Gone. Back in the day, you <laughs> couldn't keep a Star Wars toy on the shelf. Now, they're, fi they're filling landfills with their unsold products for Star Wars. Yeah. And I wonder if we're going to get called Look at the clearance out. bins. Look at the clear. I've seen guys make videos of the clearance bins oh God, of all yeah. the unsold Star Wars toys. Oh God, that, from that's the, a good the idea. Last, the last three movies. And, yeah, uh, you know, I've they seen. Tried, they tried bringing it back with the uh, the Mandalorian, which honestly, I stopped. I stopped watching that Mandalorian when. Uh, who's that gorgeous actor? Gina Carano. Gina Carano. For, Same here. Yeah, when when they fired her, I was I was like, I'm I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, yeah I, I actually I've never actually watched. Yeah. I watched like one episode and I was at my mother's house because my nephew pays for Disney Plus and I watched one episode. But I I just I am not going to give Disney any more my money or time. Yeah. Uh, it's funny you mentioned the clearance bin thing. I have actually found Disney Star Wars toys still in the box donated 
to Goodwill, Salvation Army, all that. No one, they won't even open the box. That's how, that's how little of a shit kids give about this stuff because it's that bad. I, I believe it. I believe it. Listen, I had I had all twelve when they when they first came out in seventy eight with the with the toys. Kenner came out with twelve action figures, uh-huh. and I used to be able to buy them at Bradley's or Zares, the chain stores that don't even exist anymore, for a dollar eighty eight. And I remember begging my mom. I'm like, Mom, can I have two dollars, <laughs> please? I need, she was like, you already have that one because, you know, Stormtrooper. I was like, I want another Stormtrooper. She said, you already have that one. I said, no, but there's a lot of Stormtroopers. I need a lot of them. Yeah. And I would get them like the <laughs> Army men when we were kids. I would, I would like set them on fire. I did the same shit. Like, you know, battle damage. <laughs> I did the but same I saw shit. a guy um, not too long ago. Actually, no, it was probably about 10 years ago. A guy had a Darth Vader original 1978 Darth Vader action figure in the blister pack, and it was rated A++. And like I said, back in the day, you could buy one of those for a dollar and eighty-eight cents plus tax. So, and this guy sold this thing on eBay for like nine hundred dollars. Wow. And the Darth Vaders were everywhere. If you went into a store when I was a kid, if you went into a store, they always had a ton of Chewbacca and a ton of Darth Vader. The the Sand People and the Jawas, you could never find those anywhere. I finally got my hands on one someplace, something someplace way out of town. But uh, you could never get your hands on those, so I can't imagine what those would go for. But these things, like you said, they're going in a landfill, like the old uh, the Atari ET game. Yeah, you know, exactly. They're like, oh, this will yeah. sell, this will sell like gangbusters. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, landfill. Yeah, that's what it did. That's exactly landfill right. in Alamogordo, New Mexico. <laughs> yep. And, and listen, um, it's going to have to get a lot worse before they start changing their tune. Yeah, it, it's starting. Yeah. But it's but just like you know you said it's mission creep. So yeah. just like it was slow to get to this point, and you know, and now we're at this tipping point where things are the pendulum is finally starting to swing back the other way. Well, let's, let's it's going to be just as slow to undo it. Let's correct this. We can hope the pendulum is starting to swing the other way. Uh, I mean, the stock values do speak for themselves at this point. Yeah, because number well, money. Listen, money talks and bullshit walks. Amen. And guess what? They've been making a bunch of bullshit, and people have been walking. Yep. But if we talk about this too much, we might get flagged by the disinformation police. Also think about this. How how long does it take to turn around an aircraft carrier? You're not doing it. You're not doing it in a way fast. How long did it take to turn the Titanic? Oh, wait. Damn it. Yeah, it didn't work out. Too soon. Oh, that was deliberate. That was deliberate. Don't you know that? Oh, yeah. Sure. What? What? (laughs) <laughs> I won't touch on that on this on this channel. I'll wait until we get on we Alt could, Tech. I'm we could talk to that. it. We could talk about it on Alt Tech. Or... <laughs> oh man! I mean, well, we could have you on for Conspiracy Series Sunday or something. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, we can't do a quick honored. roll call though, and we, we have a. Sp- I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jerry. No, I'd say I'd be honored. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, yeah. th- this guy knows his shit. Yeah, because I love conspiracy theories, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever want to do like a conspiracy theory thing just for new tech, you let me know. I'll set you up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, We'll do a quick roll call here, and then we are finally going to release our first ad for Administrative Violence Divorce and Custody Edition with And then we're going to get into our main subject of the night, liar, liar, food's on fire. It's good times. All right, we got 76 currently watching over on Twitch. 62 on D Live, 93 currently watching over on Odyssey, 52 on MGTOW.TV, 664 watching over on Rumble, and wow, biggest crowd we've had in a while, 1113 currently watching on YouTube, but only 488 likes. So you what are you guys doing? Kidding me? What are you doing? Smash it! God damn it! <laughs> All right, are we ready on the right? Yep. Ready on the left? Yep. Ready in the middle? Uh, put your selector switch Ooh. on safe or on fire and fire at will. All right. Did you know that 85% of custody cases in the United States automatically award child support, I mean, custody to the woman? And of the remaining 15%, half are uncontested. So as a man, you have 7.5% chance of seeing your kids more than four times a month. How do you like those odds? That's right, I didn't think you would. I'm Terrence Pop, an army vet, evil genius, and non-custodial parent. And sadly, I have navigated this system myself. 
Now I want you gentlemen to benefit from my wisdom and suffering. <laughs> Introducing Administrative Violence, Divorce and Custody Edition. I will teach you how to make bureaucracy your breeding dog. And I will teach you how to win the long game without taking the L along the way. Administrative Violence has over four hours of exclusive content. Tutorials, shopping lists, interviews, oh, and a workbook. Part of the uh, tradecraft classes and courses I did, where they tell you how to build the clean room and how to clean up after the clean room and how to get rid of DNA. All of this wisdom can be yours for 200 bucks. But if you are a supporter of this show, we're going to send you a coupon code so you can save some cash. This course will be hosted exclusively on manopay.net. And it's going to sell for five days only starting on Memorial Day. So mark your calendars and get ready to pick one hell of a fight. <laughs>
I never expected that. that I never expected that to happen. To be honest yeah. with you. I mean, I know that we we didn't save Jerry, but I mean, hey, if we can make you laugh too, and at the very least, you know, guys like Jerry, even if we don't save their life, I mean, who's to say that Jerry hasn't by proxy helped save someone else's life by spreading the word? I just sharing my videos. Yeah. So we thank you, Jerry, for being such a devout fan for five years. Thanks, bro. Andrake, you know what Clement she once said about war? No, I don't know what that. What is that? uh? He said war is too too important to be left to generals. (laughs) Fifty years ago. He may have been right, but today, <laughs> war is too important to be left to politicians. <laughs> they yeah. have neither the time, the training, nor the inclination for strategic thought. Yep. I will no, no longer sit back and allow communist indoctrination, communist infiltration, communist subversion, and the evil communist <sighs> post-war conspiracy uh. To sap and purify all our precious, all of our bodily, precious fluids. bodily fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Strange Love or how I learned to stop worrying and love the penis straw. <laughs> Bastard. <laughs> I remember uh, uh, one of my favorite movies of all time. The army story about Doctor Strange Love. <laughs> so we have this big inspection, a battalion inspection, and I was in the Ranger Battalion. And I was the sniper section leader. I had all my snipers, their kits out, all weapons out, everything ready to go. We're waiting around for like an hour because we're on the third floor. And the commander and the first sergeant, the sergeant major, battalion commander have to come up all the floors to get ours. And we were watching Dr. Strangelove. And right just before the bomb scene, we hear that. <laughs> that means every everyone gets up, stands at attention because you're, the, com- the upper command is coming through. And I'm standing there. The company commander walks in. He's like, hey, what's going on, Pop? Everything cool? <laughs> First sergeant comes in. Eh, Ranger, your place looks a little dirty. And he starts looking at stuff. And the commander's like, oh, wait, whoa, whoa. You're watching Strangelove? All right, unpause it. <laughs> he sits down there and we watch him ride the bomb in. He gets up and goes, I love that goddamn scene. And he just walks out of the room. <laughs> Nobody looked at shit. I mean, the first sergeant, I mean, because the first sergeant has to stay on his heels. Yeah. So when the commander leaves the room, the first sergeant leaves. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. Gotta love Dr. Strange Love, man. That bomb scene, man, that was hilarious. And he rides the bomb down. Yep. That's good shit. That whole movie's hilarious. Uh, you know what's not hilarious, though? Is that we are in the midst of a supply chain crisis, and yep. I, I mean there is it is insane the amount of food processing plants that have been going up in flames. Not just going up in flames, planes are crashing into yep. them. That has happened twice just this year. You know, I seem to remember a time about twenty years ago when two planes crashed into two particular buildings in New York City, and we acknowledged that the nation was under attack. Mm-hmm. But nobody's really talking about this, at least no, not in not. any particular detail. Tucker Carlson did. I actually have, uh, thanks to Jerry, I have one of his news segments here. I'm going to bring it up here, but I'm going to double check and make sure that it's not screwed up like the other one because of what happened the last time. So, mm-hmm. All right, let's try this. So yeah, just moments got before we went- What's going on here, man? What's going on here, man? Got to get in there. <clears throat> hey, All right, Mur- now, Murphy's I did, look, I did look, wait, before we to play this. Sure. <clears throat> All right, for those of you that don't know, I worked in finance, um, a real estate guy, and, you know, part of my uh, working in finance, I had to deal in life insurance. So I had to become up to speed on mortuary tables. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know what a mortuary table is, they quite literally, it's odds are you going to live or you're going to die. All right. Now, when I did the research on this, on average, you have one to three of these places burning down a year. It, it just that's just the way it goes. Twenty one is way higher than three. We're yeah. talking what a seven thousand percent increase. Mm-hmm. Why and the fuck are we not talking about it? And why the hell are we not investigating what the fuck is going on? Because if it's a goddamn insurance scam, which I understand, I don't condone it, but it is what it is. I, I would like to take them off the list because we know they, they did it to themselves. But if there's some fuckers out there, some unseen force pulling strings that's doing this shit, 
We need to find out who they are and put them at the end of a fucking rope. Yeah. Mm. Um, because I, I've noticed this. Somebody actually responded to you talking about this on your Facebook page mm -hmm. and said, like, well, you know, these, they have, like, you know, a certain number of fires at these things a year. Yeah. Fires is one thing. It, virtually every manufacturing facility will report a minor fire every now and then. Planes crashing into buildings what and the these places literally thinking? burning to the ground is a whole other matter entirely. Yeah, this is insane. Yeah, because you look at these photos right here in this archived version of this article here. These do not look like minor fires. These are scorchers. Yeah. I mean, it, it, some of them could have been insurance jobs. I mean, quite frankly, we had a lockdown. There was a bunch of issues with, you know, what companies could stay open, what couldn't. Then they had worker problems. And maybe these a couple of these uh, places are like, hey, if we want to break even, this motherfucker's got to burn down. Yep. I don't condone that, but I understand it. Yeah. And another one caught fire just yesterday. Oh, wow. Amazing. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to jump over here to this... Uh broadcast here that jerry sent us and i'm going to keep an eye on youtube make sure they don't try to smash us for copyright so we'll, we'll take some pauses and whatnot but he he breaks it down pretty good and he's got a guest on i believe so just moments before we went to air tonight a plane apparently crashed at a general mills plant a food plant in covington georgia six tractor trailers were reportedly on fire you're seeing pictures from the scene right now this is the second time in a week that something like this has happened on april 14th the plane crashed into the gem state processing in east idaho What's going on here? Well, the story gets weirder. Food processing plants all over the country seem to be catching <clears throat> fire. A couple of days ago, a fire destroyed the headquarters Damn. of Azure Standard, one of the largest yeah, that's not a minor fire in the country. Nope. At the end of last month... I mean, look at that. The, the, the entire structure is collapsing. A fire severely damaged a fresh onion packing well, facility that could happen in South anywhere. Texas. In Good Oregon, totally. a potato chip processing plant to support a boiler explosion fine. that sent workers to the hospital. Here's a news report on that. <laughs> Eastern Oregon, where crews are battling a major... Oh, yeah, just a minor fire, right? Look at that. Holy yeah, and those shit. And those buildings are not built that well anyway, but... Ugh. Like, what? Well, I don't get it. It's nuts. Your fire at a potato yeah, it chip... make it look like an accident. Yeah, totally, man. You know, they'll never know. <laughs> Processing plant. Air 12 flew over the Ooh. scene at Shearer's Foods on Highway... Uh, potato chip processing plant fire. Yeah, not as many Pringles cans to shit in, Pop. I'm yeah, oh God, come on. <laughs> shit, one <laughs> Pringles can. <laughs> We're told the fire was caused by an explosion of a portable boiler there. Two people were taken to the hospital. So that industrial accidents biblical, happen. Those, those fires, man. That is, look at that. Yeah, that is huge. Yep. Yeah, they, these are just insane. And, oh, man. Of course. Mm. But this is a lot of industrial accidents at food processing facilities at the same time the president's warning us about food shortages. They're getting hit by planes and catching fire. What is going on here exactly? Jay you know, it's funny that he mentions, you know, the food shortages. Because if you remember a couple of months ago on the stream, uh -huh. we showed you an assembly of TikTok videos of people showing not just, you know, Farmers scorching their own land, plowing it up, destroying crops, but also they showed the receipts. They showed the letters they received from our own Department of Agriculture ordering <laughs> them to do so. Yep. Uh, and we have another one here, but again, I have a, I have a feeling it's going to screw up, so I'm just going to pause Listen. it. Listen. Yep. <laughs> I knew it was going to go. do it. Uh, Murphy's kicking my ass today, man. I'm not sure why that happened. All right, double check and make sure that the audio is good. It's going to be coming through all right. Seems to be good. Pull this down a little bit so I don't deafen y'all. Check it out. To this. Okay, TikTok, you've been hearing a lot about the uh, government paying to come in and destroy crops. And I'm just here to tell you that it is absolutely true. They came in here. They took about 10 acres off of this farm, uh, paid us about double the market price. We couldn't say no. Now, that is not the fucked up part. Mm. Just wait. But they kind of pulled a fast one on us. They pushed about a foot of topsoil off. As you can see, it's off the side here. They got it labeled and everything. And uh, they're actually starting to load that up on side dumps. And they're hauling it to the West Coast ports. And they're putting it on, on all these empty all right. shipping containers. Shipping containers. That uh, are going back to China. So all right. First of all. China. If you give somebody the right to, you know, if they want to destroy some of your crops, okay. Now, if they're removing shit from the land, all right, 
That is not crops. That's actually the land. And there's yep. a huge fucking legal case for that. You just can't go in there and fucking, you know, top scrape the topsoil because you bought the crops. That, that's not how this works. The, the, we need to fucking really get to the bottom of that. That is bullshit. Oof. And that's extremely fertile topsoil. You can't make that overnight. No, it takes, got, that takes years. Five years to ten to make years. That. You got to compost. Mm-hmm. You got to make a you, compost heap. You got to throw the earthworms in it. Let them do their do their magic. And uh, it's mm-hmm. it's something you can't. You're not replacing that. No, anytime soon. It's going to take five to ten years, depending upon the environment. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now, I, as always, I mean, we always provide receipts for everything. I did manage to find an article that talks about uh, how the experts aren't convinced that it's actually a problem. So you guys, I'm sure, will enjoy, you know, reading this and ripping apart the so-called logic. This is uh, this is quite hilarious. Uh, <laughs> experts like, you know, the people over at Vice. But did I forget to read that tweet? from vice about the 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 abortion issue i think you did because i mean th- it kind of ties in here because we're talking about experts that aren't convinced that food processing plants all over the country catching fire and having planes crashed into them is actually a problem <coughs> right yeah oh uh, holy smoke and joe frazier oh jesus jimmy bones sent me this earlier <laughs> uh if you're a fan of irony point here yourself a shot this is from Motherboard, which is a subsidiary of Vice. Rogan, this is from uh, the top one, September 8th, 2021. Rogan has recovered from COVID-19 and used his first show back to spread misinformation about the horse deworming drug he took. Today, my Saprostol is relatively easy to acquire from veterinary sources, since in addition to medically inducing abortion, it is also used to treat ulcers in horses. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I take I take horse medicine. It's not a big deal. But it's the same thing, shit you give humans. These are the experts yeah, I got, I got we're supposed to trust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought the, medical disinformation was a crime on Twitter. The flip flop fannies. <laughs> I gotcha. Oh man. Are you on uh Twatter, Jerry? Did you get a new account after things uh you know went tits uh tits turvy or are you just abstaining? No, I'm I made I made a bogus I made a bogus uh account on, on Twatter maybe seven or eight years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh I get the email alerts and there's only there's only a few people I follow. I follow like Marianne from Brooklyn on the Stern Show, and uh, but I don't even uh, read them. I, I haven't looked at it. I haven't followed the Stern Show or listened to the Stern Show in over five years. Oh, he went woke. Yeah, there's no point guy. in listening to him. Yeah, we just uh, I just started another Twitter called Redonkulous Pop. I tweet there like maybe once or twice a week. I, I should probably do it more. Yep. And if you can read it without depopping it, you get a prize. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we might actually have some. We might actually push that off to some wrenches. Uh, Jimmy Bones is ready and waiting in the wings, good sir. He knows the social medias. Because we, I quite literally upload to what six different sites Just on, a, yeah. on a regular basis. We have another uh, helper or associate who does five or six, and then you do yours. Yeah. We quite literally post our content on virtually every video hosting site on the Internet, minus... The one that was in France that shut us down for no reason. Oh, Daily Motion. Daily Motion. Yeah. Well, they have started putting ads on everything and not paying their creators, so yeah. they're 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 committing suicide. Yeah, th- yeah, they fucked themselves. Yeah. Uh, but ooh, ooh. Uh, back to the topsoil thing. Unfortunately, this is nothing new. Um, this has been an ongoing problem for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, this right here from NPR dates back to 2019. American soil is increasingly foreign owned. Um, large, large swaths of farmland are being stock are being you know bought up by foreign investors. Nearly thirty million acres. Yep. As of twenty nineteen, as of twenty twenty one, China was throwing its hand into the ring, and at that point in time, had bought nearly two hundred thousand acres mm-hmm. of prime American farmland. And and listen. If they're bankrolling the other countries that are part of that other 30 million acres, we could be seeing a large problem here. Well, this is what's on the radar for a lot of the red states, is they're onto this, and a lot of that farmland is in red states. 
And as the left and the right, you know, keep separating and we, we cr we're creating that divide, China and all these companies, especially that fucker we're going to put up next, Oof. they're just going to take it away from them and yeah. use public, well, was it public domain to do so. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? You got to feed the Americans first. I have no idea why our politicians don't feed our, our citizens first. They don't even fucking protect our fucking borders. Oh, shit, man. The, the Democrats filibustered $4 billion for the wall, but now they want to money launder $33 billion to Ukraine. Hmm? <laughs> a, a, a country that, you know, loves to post all of the damage that is being accumulated by Russian forces, but so, for some reason they have to keep recycling old war footage from other countries that's like five years old. Listen, I, and I have, an or, I have a guy in Moldova who I want to get him on the show if we can work out the logistics. Z? Is no, Z? It's another guy. Oh, it's another guy? Oh, yeah. I want to have Z back on here. Another guy. And uh, he's he's got a whole different uh, angle on the Russians. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this insanity, Jerry? I mean, this is... This is off the chain. When you see that, you know, Bill Gates is now the largest private owner of American farmland and you've got over 30 million acres of land being purchased, you know, by foreign investors and a supply chain crisis. <clears throat> and now we have, you know, we're being warned about food shortages. What do you see coming down the pipe, dude? Well, it's all it's all been it's all been planned. And uh, it's it's also prophecy being uh, being uh Coming, coming true. If if uh, if I can talk about two points very quickly, bring it. There's four horsemen of the apocalypse in Revelation. Four mm -hmm. horsemen. The first one uh, is given a crown and a bow, and he goes out conquering and to conquer. Now, a crown in Latin or Greek is corona, and the bow in Greek, ancient Greek, is called toxin. So, mm -hmm. what does a bow shoot? A bow shoots arrows so you're thinking a toxin coming from a bow related to corona right. just saying <laughs> and the sec the second horseman is famine and that's uh, famine where uh, it's going to cost a days a full day's pay to get one day's worth of food and uh, i don't know if you if you've been to the supermarket lately but uh -huh. it's happening yeah it is it's 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 rising it's 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 rising so i mean these things are going to happen it has to happen and uh, things are getting a whole lot worse before there's ever a chance of them getting better. Absolutely correct. Bad news bears, baby. Bad news bears. I don't know. So yeah, when they tell you, you know, when you read this, you know, this article about uh, you know the, the experts disagreeing with you know food processing plants going up in flames, having you know planes crash into them and whatnot, telling you it's no big deal. Don't forget. The same mainstream media outlets that six years ago swore on a stack of Bibles they would never help one campaign over another because we're impartial news sources and we're pillars of the fourth estate. And then it turned out that it was absolutely true. Donna Brazile from CNN was literally giving the Hillary Clinton campaign the questions <laughs> for the debate ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And now the Biden administration has asked the mainstream media to positively spin economic news in order to increase consumer confidence, and they are bragging about becoming essentially state media. Absolutely correct. Well, what, what was the license that uh, Obama gave to news sources to essentially become propaganda outlet? The smith munt Modernization Act. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. What, That's a mouthful. Book, 2012. Yep. They set the stage mm -hmm. back then. And, of course, they hid it in another bill. And when are we going to stop letting Congress do bullshit like that? Yeah, has listen. one bill that has one function at a time. Yeah. Listen, do your fucking job. No, here's, you here's should five, be there for 500,000 pages. Here's 500,000 pages, and you have to vote on it in four hours. Yeah. We have to, uh, we have to you know, pass the bill in order to find out what is in it. Yeah, that right? is so fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. That's, and my, uh, my thing yeah. is this. Uh, if... If the bill can't stand on its own to get put into law, it shouldn't be put forward. Amen. You stick it in these huge fucking pork barrel fucking bundles is absolute fucking horseshit because a lot of the problems we have today are because of these bullshit laws. Yeah. We literally have, like, literally, if you were to buy all of the books for all of the federal laws, they would stack up two feet high for this 
the entire fucking desk, and that's just like in the past 10 years. Yeah. It goes up about 12 feet. That's a, And most of those were passed because they added them to these big bundles for like the budget yeah. and defense spending or what have you. That is horseshit. And and if they're like, well, you know, there's we, we don't really have enough time to do all this. Like, fuck you. You ran for fucking office. You knew what was taking place. You show up to do the job, but you don't want to do the job. Why are you there? Please answer the question. You should be there 8 to 12 hours a day reading all this shit. You should have a staff advising you what's going on. And if you don't trust somebody in your staff, fire their ass. It's fucking crazy. (laughs) And then they vote themselves another pay raise. You know, 200 years ago... Uh, people in government had businesses. They were farmers. They were lawyers. They were doctors. They were business owners. Veterans. And they would come. They, they would come. They would come to you know the, the the state capitals and the nation's capital, you know, to vote on something, and then they would go back home. Yeah. You know, they're not locked in in a in a you know w- without term limits. At I don't even know what their pay raise is. Last I heard, Congress. Congressmen were getting 173,000, but yeah. that was before the pay raise they voted themselves earlier this year. Yeah, so I have bullshit. no idea what they're getting now. And they have like their special health care, and then if you're in, uh, their retirement packages are just ludicrously absurd. Yeah, and their exorbitant salaries do not even take into account all of the taxpayer-funded bells and whistles, like the cars, you know, the, having drivers, their their private security. security. Yeah, you're not allowed to have a gun because gun. Guns bad, but I'm going to spend three hundred thousand of your taxpayer dollars on private security ran by what? Well, firearms. Guys with guns. Guys like me, because yep. uh, a lot of my, a lot of my buddies Ugh. got out of the service, and for a few years there, quite a few of them were hunting human beings in uh, Pakistan. Sounds like fun. P- Pakistan. We're not supposed to be there. I got a question. What? Ugh. All right, let me let me rephrase. Congress's approval rating in this country usually rocks somewhere around like seventeen mm-hmm. percent. They're like two notches below having a really satisfying diarrhea shit after Taco Tuesday. <laughs> they're they're way down there. Now. Let's say that, you know, you and I were to go to work for a company and we, we have a boss. You know, we, we work for Whitey who reports to Murphy and he works for the man. And there's 100 employees in that office. And in order to get a raise, we had to make sure that we had at least like an 80% approval rating. But the only, you could only find 17 people in that office who agreed that you did a good job. Would you get a raise? Probably not. So why the fuck are we letting these assholes vote themselves pay raises when they have a a lower approval rating than the shit floating in my toilet? (laughs) Absolutely correct. It is a clusterfuck, and I don't know how we're going to fix it. Well, I know how it's going to get fixed, and ultimately in the end, and it's going to be violence. Like, I'm sorry, they should never be allowed to vote themselves pay raises. If they want a pay raise, they need to turn to their constituents and actually plead their case. If they want to pay raise, their constituents should vote to give them one. Absolutely correct. If they're fucking up and they're not doing their job, no pay raise for you. Come back correct. one year. I, and I would like to see a, a maximum, like, 12 years you can work for the federal government. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, And these people, one of the articles, I love it. It's like, oh, you know, China's buying up farmland, which is sparking concern in Congress. Oh, you mean the Congress that's owned by fucking China? Absolutely correct. Those fuckers have sold out so hard. If you... If you have foreign investments and you are working for the United States government, you should automatically be put in the file cabinet under traitor and forcibly removed from your position because you have split loyalties to this country and you will never put this country first. That's absolutely correct. Amen. And they women. That's gay. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Any final thoughts, Jerry, before we jump over to New Tech and start reading some super chats? Well, let's. And before we do that, let's do a last road call before we switch well, let's, over. We'll do a road call before we switch over. All right. What do you What do you think, Jerry? Any last thoughts on on Congress uh, stealing our topsoil and sending it to the uh, 
the pinko pox people? <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather not make myself nauseous. Uh, we'll just let it go. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you, man. All right, we'll do a quick roll call here, and then we'll head over to, to New Tech to read your Super Chats. I know we see a lot of emails, a lot of chats there. We just want you guys to be able to speak unfiltered. And therefore, reading stuff on New Tech, you can talk as much shit as you want. You can send us emails if you don't want to you know, write your whole chat out on YouTube. We're good with everything. Amen. Indian women. Okay, stop it. I love fucking with you. All right, 92 on Twitch, 80 on DLive, uh, 111 on Odyssey, All right. 56 on MGTOW.TV, rocking 769. It's a good number, especially those last two on Rumble, and 1166 on YouTube with 812 likes, still 300 short. Wow. You're hurting my feelings. Damn it. All right, we're going to take a quick break, go drain our squirrel bladders, and then we're going to jump over to new tech. We're going to talk some more mad trash and read your super chats. Uh, look for those links in the chat to all those new tech platforms. And Jeffrey Paul, the man who composes all of our music now, has released a new track called Bull. You can find it on YouTube. Search for his channel, Jeffrey Paul Music. But just for you, here's a sneak peek. <laughs> 